This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's Behave with Arden Moore. This show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Hey, do you got a fat cat? You got a finicky cat? Do you wonder if the food you're dishing up is bringing out the healthy best in your feline friend? Well, guess what? You're in luck. Our guest today knows her way around pet nutrition. She's the president of Ziwi, Z-I-W-I, and she's a major pet advocate. Please welcome to our show, Mary Helen Horn. Welcome, welcome, Mary. Yes, well, thank you for the warm welcome, and hopefully, like everyone else, you know, you're here to talk about our beloved pets that we love. I've been in pet a while. I'm not sure I've been in it longer than you, well, but um, 2003 was my very first opening to learning that what we feed our pets actually matters for their health. And there are a whole lot of options out there. And it's a really overwhelming place to navigate as a pet parent. But most importantly, there's options. And these options can like really transform the lives of your pet. So super exciting to talk about it. I might be a little bit before you, but that's okay. What were you doing before 2003? Were you the number one washer and dryer salesperson? Did you create a new coffee? What were you doing? I wasn't doing much. I was freshly graduated from college. Tell her, go ahead, brag about your college. I, I was going to go into, I went to the University of Texas. I was going to go in to sales, grew up passionate about pets, thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. You know, lots of people do kind of um, decided that was a hard route for me, you know, emotionally. And yeah. maybe I didn't want to go to that much school combination of those things. I um, right. kind of knew I wanted to be in sales and then a pet company found me and I was like, well, this is the dream. I mean, like I, I love dogs. I love cats. I love animals. I never even thought about having a career in pet food. And, you know, it's uh, it's treated me really well. And here we find ourselves in 2024. And it's just exciting to see how the industry grows and changes. And most important, what I would say is getting back to like the way cats should be eating anyway. Well, let's dive into that because for many years, I wrote the nutrition column for Catster and Dogster magazine. I work with a lot of veterinary nutritionists and there's always more questions than answers. But the bottom line, let's just start basic. Food is fuel and cats are carnivores. So can you kind of help us? They're not us. They don't really want to have this sit around the dining room table and say, pass the peas, right? Cats are more solitary. <laughs> they they want to kind of eat their own food in their own bowl without a lot of chit chat. Would you agree? Yeah. They're also natural hunters. Right? There you go. And, you know, you talked a lot about what is a cat and eagle. Cats an obligate carnivore, which it means it has to have meat and it has to have fat. And that's really what its body can digest. So anytime you're feeding our feline friends anything that's not meat, animal protein, and not fat from animal protein, it's really, really hard for them to digest and their bodies kind of don't know what to do with it. And it leads to all kinds of tummy challenges and other issues. And so sometimes what happens is a pet food company or brands may try to work around that. They may say, okay, well, animal protein is expensive and carbohydrates don't cost a lot. And so they may put other ingredients in like the magical word peas or carbohydrates or things like that. And it's always just a trade-off because you're putting these ingredients in the food that your cat doesn't really want to eat. And then your cat is actually made to digest them because their body cannot digest carbohydrates and they can't make certain like essential amino acids like taurine. Really, really critical. I know your company has a good rep, Zeewee, and you kind of uh, travel away from the United States to make these foods. Tell us a little bit the backstory of Zeewee, which is kind of cool. I've never been to that country. It's on my bucket list. New Zealand should be on everyone's bucket list because it's spectacular. 
We do say, though, if you live in New Zealand and you have a cat, try to keep them inside because it is the country of birds and oh. a lot of their birds are endangered. So we do like to protect those there. But we come from the, the home of New Zealand and what's great is our founders said, you know, hey, we've got cats, we've got dogs, we are interested in feeding raw food, but it might not be for our lifestyle. You know, we're a little bit more into convenience. We're a little bit more into scoop and serve, but safety is important to us. We wanted to feel safe. We wanted to feel good about keeping it in our household. And that's kind of how we started creating a pet food. But the gift of New Zealand is that so far removed. I mean, like it's just literally almost as far away as you can go, but it doesn't have 365 animal diseases. So you pretty much have free range animals living year round there. Which is healthy for the cat and dog foods, right? Yeah. And so it just makes it happy and healthy. And it's also quite a temperate climate. I always call it like the weather of San Diego. And the- I used to live there. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. And I mean, not only is it just beautiful countryside and they film like Lord of the Rings there and do all these like amazing things there. A cat should be in Lord of the Rings. I mean, come on. Really, a cat should be probably everywhere, you know, which we don't disagree with at all. And most importantly, you know, they should be healthy enough to have the energy to want to go do all that, that fun stuff and, and live their great lives. Well, you mentioned a temperate climate. Uh, mm-hmm. These There's not a lot of chemicals around, but your company is also serving people in the United States. So there's a lot of transportation nightmares, I guess. But you're committed to making sure the food is coming from there, right? For yeah, the most well, part. committed to making sure the food comes from there. And we make it at all of our own facilities. And that's really for us to have full control, like kind of like farm to bowl and that whole piece of the the universe. And also you just can't beat the quality from New Zealand. So when we're put, when we're saying, okay, hey, put high meat in the food, our cat foods are anywhere from like 85 to 96% meat. I mean, when you're saying meat, there is meat in that food. And as you would know, being around so long, I'm like, not that well, we old, have to play I'm in pet, like in pet, right? Yeah, you've yeah. been in pet, you've been talking about pet for a long time. You know, you only have to be three percent meat to be a cat food, right? So which is crazy. Yeah. So you're up in the eighties as a percentage. And Minimum, yep. When I teach behavior classes and I teach pet first aid classes, you know, I always say when we get to the food section, because we're trying to make sure portion control, making the meal time safe and not a fight and all that, but reading the label. So can you give us a few tips on how to read a cat label to make sure you're really doing a good job of getting a high protein source for your kitty cat? Yeah. So if it was me reading the label, I always say the first eight ingredients matter the most. Okay. There's rules of thumb somewhere that say somewhere between the first five and eight ingredients make up 80% of the weight of the food. So if it was me, I'd say just look at that first line or maybe the first line and second line of the ingredient deck. And what I would be looking for is meat, right? So does it say chicken and does it say, you know, chicken liver and does it say chicken hearts or different organs or different parts of the animal, right? What you would maybe want to not look for in that deck is things that mimic protein or where protein can come from that's not meat. Give me an example. Potatoes. Potatoes. Potatoes could be one. Peas could be a form of protein in there. And other grains could be forms of protein. Ah, than the cats are. are the meat, meat, meat species. Yeah. They crave meat. They, you know, I always say they don't have thumbs. They can't light lighters. They're not cooking their food. I know some cats that know how to get into cabinets, though. They're this pretty true. Talented. And they're always, you know, looking for live gray. You know, they like their live gray. And, you know, it's also the issue why they have so many hydration issues is because they haven't of all the pots getting their hydration from their food that they eat in the wild, just from their meat source. So I understand you have a kitty cat named George that lives at your home. What's George like and what's his eating habits? We are lucky because George is an adopted male cat and he did pretty well transitioning the food. Sometimes you don't know what they were eating before. George likes a variety of different things to eat, which is really nice. Does he even know who he's living with? Does he realize he hit the kitty lotto? He might not even know he's a cat because he'll oh. eat treats and eat out of your hand, right? Like he's a very, very, very easy to feed, which is quite nice, right? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Before we had George, we had um, a lovely uh, cat named Lily and she was great. A little bit different. Lily did not eat out of your hand. No way. Lily didn't like treats. She liked to play with toys. 
And Lily constantly changed her mind on what she may or may oh, not want to eat. You got a finicky and eater. Yeah. Finicky eater and had quite a bit of like stool consistency issues and constipation issues. And like she was kind of one where we were like chasing our universe, right? And I had some overweight issues as well. So, you know, Lily was a bit of more of an example where it took a lot longer like to transition her to a food that we wanted her to eat because sometimes they can find something really palatable, but it might not be high carb, like it might be high carbs or sugars or palatin. So she was a little bit more of a journey for us to get there. We got lucky with George because he just came in right away and said, I like food with a lot of meat. We're we're good. We're good, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, before we take a break, the, the thing is we don't want a fat cat and no. we don't want our cat waddling looking like a furry ottoman. How dangerous is obesity in cats? Well, what did, I think they say 60, 63% of cats are obese and overweight. Like, so yeah. it would be a true epidemic. And, you know, you're not going to walk your cat lightly. It's not that easy to get your cat to exercise. If your cat's not playful, it's not going to be playful. And obesity can lead to lots of things, right? It can lead to diabetes for our cats. It can lead to lots of other like glucose challenges for them and other health issues. So I think you know, one of the number one ways you can help your cat maintain a healthy weight is to feed them high meat diets and low in carbohydrates. And it's like the number one thing to do because oftentimes you can easily go out there and find a cat food that says, hey, I'm a diet cat food or I'm going to help your cat lose weight. But, you know, just turn around, read those first ingredients and say, are those first ingredients meat? And and I think that's what you should ask yourself when you're when you're saying, will it really help change their 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 the weight around their uh, their belly? Hey everyone, uh, we're speaking with Mary Helen Horn. She's the big cheese, the top cat at Zwi, and uh, she knows a thing or two about pet nutrition, and she's dedicated her life to that. So we're going to dive in a little bit more about what we can do at the food bowl after we take this break. Y'all know what to do. You got to sit her. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. Oh, behave. We'll be right back. Pause up, pet pals. Arden Moore here, your host of the Oh, Behave show. Me? Wow. Did you know there's up to 100 million free roaming cats in the United States? And without spay or neuter, that number is only going to keep growing. Not only does spay, neuter, humanely reduce the community cat population, it keeps cats healthy. Scooter, the neuter cat, is on a mission to give cats an extra life by making it hip to be snipped. Hey, check them out. Go to givethem10.org. That's givethemten.org. And help us make this a better world for cats. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Hi, this is Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield, urging you to listen to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. O Behave is back with more tail wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I love this gal. She is a crusader for cats and dogs, and she is focusing on the food, the food bowl. And we talked a little bit about the importance because cats are able to get carnivores. They really need the protein and the meat. Reading the label, and we talked a little bit about the obesity. So I'm not really good at this, but portion control tips, I'm trying to practice on myself, but what's the value of portion control? And you got some tips to share, Mary? I feel like with our cats, it's really important and probably with ourselves too. But, you know, yeah, well, I can be story. like, oh, my jeans are tight today. You know, I'm going to change a little bit. You know, I don't feel good when I wake up. I, I modify. You know, our cats don't get to make that modification, right? They're not telling us all those cues. And most of the time, they're eating the same thing twice a day or at different intervals. So I would say if it was me and I was trying to help portion control my, um, my cat, I would say, 
you know, feeding at set times of the day. And I swear, I swear, Mary, some cats, I swear, have invisible watches. So they if you wake do. up at seven and you immediately feed your cat, they're going to make sure they wake you up at 645. And they're going to learn. And they don't care if it's Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like, right. No, sorry, mom. I don't care. I don't care if it's raining either. Like I, I have, I don't care, but it's, it's food time. But that's actually a really, really good way to help get your cats in a better spot. Because if your cat is struggling with weight, a free feeder or feeding too often or having too much accessibility to food would be a, a big challenge for them. There are some maybe can regulate, but not many. I have a very smart orange tabby named Casey. And we teach pet first aid with my dog, Kona. And we went to, it's like a house-like setting to teach a group of pet sitters pet first aid. And they had sequestered all the cats that were in that house office to out of the way, but they left the portion control food out there and they said it was all turned off. My cat, Casey, figured out how to get into the food. Well, they're pretty smart. Yeah, they're like feline food Houdinis, right? Especially if it smells good. They yeah. like it. You know, they're really into it. So portion control is good. Yeah. I, I agree with you. The feeding bowls, they sound like we're being lazy a little bit, you know. I always measure my food. I think that would that would be a second thing I would say is measure your food and follow the feeding guides. And I would say if if you're looking for your cat to be a healthy weight, you should feed them at the weight you want them to be. So okay. if you cat sixteen pounds and you want your cat to be let's say thirteen pounds, right? You should feed them the amount for a 13 pound cat. Like that is almost the number one way to help get them there is to feed them at the way that you want to be and, and measure it, which it can sound a little bit, you know, over the top for feeding our cats, but it would be like the key way to do that. And then and read the ingredient deck. I mean, that's really your key. And then the other thing I would say is if you do have a cat that, that you treat or you reward, you know, those cows. You add up to. So what percentage roughly would you think would be treats versus canned or kibble to help them keep better weight? If I was, you know, uh, for me, I think having a cat that has a variety in their diet is a good thing, right? Well, good. So, yeah. I think, you know, a dry base is not a bad idea. And a wet topper is always something that you can do to add that hydration piece. So if it was me, I'd be picking that, you know, a base that's got, you know, high protein, low carbohydrate. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Using a can or a hydrator to help entice them to want to eat it. Oh, okay. That around, you know, try different things on it. And then treats for me would be, you know, lower calorie, smaller things that are special. Well, sometimes they don't know it, but I've sneaked out a few pieces of kibble and used that as a treat, but it's still part of their daily Portion. If you have a food that's palatable enough, that can happen. There is no doubt about it that, it, you know, more so in dogs than cats. But if you find something that's incredibly palatable, the dream is that you're actually feeding and treating with the same thing and you can actually control your calories way easier that way. So where do you see the pet food industry five years from now, 10 years? Where are some good things, good news that you can share that we're kind of trying to head toward as far as nutrition for cats and dogs? Yeah, I think one of the most exciting things that's going to be happening, you know, besides the humanization of pets and that we treat them like family members, you know, like we're set that aside, is one, they are looking to bring on um, carbohydrates onto our label. So when we talk about our label, like it's your GA on your bag of food. In oh. human food, we look at our GAs and it gives us all kinds of stuff. Fat, protein, carbohydrates, fiber. Yeah. Well, in pet food, you actually do not list carbohydrates. So you actually cannot easily find the percent carbohydrates on the package, which is probably an old school way of doing things. So I am most looking forward to carbohydrates being required on the GA panel. To me, it will be a game changer for the pet industry. Um, and then there is also a lot of work going on in pet to kind of change the way pet foods are regulated and the way we market or advertise our food. And so if some of those would uh, kind of come to fruition, it would be a lot easier for a pet parent to navigate because I mean that like all brands tell you how much meat's in their food. All brands tell you how much carbohydrates 
in their food. So to me, I think advancements in labeling. Yeah, because some can be marketing, you know. It's a a huge unlock for a a pet parent to figure out like, hey, I know my cat's an obligate carnivore. Okay, they need meat. How do I find it? (laughs) You know, because everybody's telling me this is made for cats. Well, you do have some good information on the Zwe site, right? You do give some guidance to pet parents. Yep. And we're always trying to find easier ways to feed cats. You know, they're finicky and a bit more particular. You know, we have a product that's called Steam Dry that I would say for us is like optimized for cats. What does that mean, Steam Dry? So what that means is we we take raw meat and ingredients. And for us, it's between 85 and 90% raw meat and organs. So the first eight ingredients and sometimes the first 12 ingredients are meat in these recipes. Wow. I want to come back as a cat. Yeah, so we mix them together and then we run it through a short steam. And what the steam actually does is it kind of like hydrates and aerates the food. So sometimes you have a hard time getting high meat into a kibble. Like it's almost impossible to do. You can only put so much meat in a piece of kibble, right? So this allows this high meat food to kind of aerate and it creates this like light, crisp texture for a cat. So I'd say it's like an optimized palate. Oh, yeah, they like the crunch. Cats eat, they eat off texture. You know, it's a number one driver for them. And then it goes through an air dryer, which is how we've always made most of our product. Yeah, I saw that on your site. Yeah, I like yeah. that. It's it's slow and gentle. And it's like, I would say, it's like how you cook your food at home, right? You could microwave your food and irradiate it. You could cook it at high temperature and fast in an oven. You could steam it. You have lots of choices, right? So it's a, a, a way of processing the food with the as least nutrient degradation in as possible. I like that phrase, women. That's awesome. Nutrition degradation. Degradation. Wow. I'm going to yeah. get a t-shirt that says that. But you're right. You don't want to zap out the good. Yeah, you don't want to radiate it in the microwave. I mean, listen, I use a microwave personally, but I also don't eat microwave food all day, every day. It's not the only that's thing. Right. I can eat, that's right? right. And that's the difference with these with these cats is they generally eat pretty similar stuff. Well, I think there you have that, whatever it's called, the twin tech air all drying yeah. process. Did I do my homework? Yeah, yeah, the twi- yeah, Z Twin Tech air drying. It's a it's a complex word for it, but it really means we have like we have two stages. One um, removes pathogenic bacteria for safe feeding, and the other one helps get it to like a moisture level, like where it would be safe to package and feed, and it would never like grow mold or um, it would Good. be it has a long shelf life. But air dried and steam dried, which is fascinating, has a fairly high moisture in it for a dry food. A kibble would probably max out at seven, and our products are more like 13 and 14 percent. Wow. So there's still nothing like a can hydrator, which we talked about. Like you could put like a ZV can on top or just a milk. There's all types of things that you're hydrating with, which are great, but it's higher moisture than a dry food, but you know, obviously not all the way there. And that's part of what that process does by not like overcooking or from nutrients. And why sorry, which thought such good ingredients and then take all the good stuff yeah, out of it. Yeah, exactly. You guys know what you're doing. Hey, before we let you go, what's something you really, really love about cats or wish a superpower cats have that you wish you had? I wish, well, 12 lives would be great. Nine lives or nine lives. I wish I had nine lives. I think cats, uh, what would I say about it? I think it's super cool that they can fall from any position and land on their feet. But I don't even know that that's the coolest thing. Probably that they're all different personalities and that like they're just truly themselves. Like where a dog more like will adapt to its parent. Right. You know, it's family. Your cat is just a cat. Like they're just like. They're, they're like, you live with me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm, I'm dictating the universe. But I, I mean, the fact that they can fall from anywhere and their spine so flexible and they land on their feet, that's pretty cool. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed having you on our show. We're talking with Mary Helen Horn. She is the president at Zwi, Z-I-W-I. And she's really on a mission to have good food and good portions and good proteins. So we don't have a bunch of Garfields running around, right? I do not disagree. I really appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on being the number one pet podcast in 2023. I also want to give a shout out to my producer, Mark Winter. He is the executive producer of Pet Life Radio. We're the largest pet radio network on the planet. We should get to moon sometime. You can check me out, ardenmore.com. 
check out I am a pet first aid instructor. I'm the founder of Pet First Aid for You, and I actually teach with my dog and my cat, Kona and Casey, in our veterinary approved class. That's kind of my big passion. So everybody, until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.